I think that's it. Well, you can zoom in, but that's wide at the moment. Where do you want me um, to go? This, oh, oh yeah, stay there, because then we'll show this. Shall yeah. I stand back? Yeah, you're okay. Just blow my nose. Um, and got me anchored with me. Okay. It's yes, on now. Yeah, it's on now. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, Mick knows we've done a video again. It's uh, probably our worst one yet. Didn't work, so we'll show it later. But it didn't explain very well what we wanted to say. Mick's camera work was, he was zooming in. You know Mick, you zoom, you got carried away with the zoom. But not to worry lads, basically what we wanted to do is going back to the old corner block thing, you know, and the concrete blocks. Remember, Mick, 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 don't Yeah, all right. He got me. Because I'm just going to say it, then I'll tell you when to go there. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, corner blocks, concrete blocks, they are, they're made for each other. For setting out remember they are so handy so with this building we measure off the building put a corner block and a block down there we do the same again make them up here yeah, no well, i'm trying to get that bit yeah. Can't keep wandering off measure off here same put your corner block and your concrete block so you pull a line now We've got a line now parallel to the building. Then we take another corner, corner block and concrete block. What you can do, normally I'd have this block on the other side, but there's a drop. But what you can do, Mick, you're allowed to zoom on this one a little bit, but keep right. the camera steady. You can put a block on there. Have you got that, Mick? And then you can slide that. But what you can do, you've got a little groove on the back there. So what you can do, you can slide it into there. So now I know that that line and that line are the same. So then I can put a slab down the other end and then we can just pull a line. Well, I think that's enough because it's, it's complicated again. You just want to get away because you've got to get at the electric palace, yeah, that's I know, all. I know, I know, but this has got to be easy. Okay, come with me, Mick. Come with me, you're allowed to come up here. Watch the step. Hang on. So that I can see where you are. Um, OK, that didn't really work out great, but you've got the gist of it. Concrete blocks, corner blocks, they work so well. It means that if you want to carry on that line, you've got another block down there, continue the line. You've got, you can change the height. If that corner wants to drop, mick, mick, yeah, right. that corner wants to drop down a bit, you can always move, you know, up and down on the corner block. You're not, you can change it a little bit. It, they are, I, I know I keep saying it, I mean, me and you didn't start using them until we were six or did we? No. And we don't stop using them, because they work all the time. The other thing that we didn't start using until we were older was the op-ups. I know I keep on about op-ups, but if you're a young chap starting up, once you start having a couple of op-ups with you, three or four right now, about 18 inches high, you will not be able to work without them for so many things. Now, for bumping out this patio, Normally, you don't know where to put the slabs. You're laying a big slab, the slab's against it, and if you've got op-ups, you can put a few on the op-up, lean the others against it, keep them away from you, don't put them on top of you, so that you can walk them, stretch your back. It's much easier with op-ups. So, and the number of times you just got a little bit of brickwork up there, you can jump on the op-up. Or you want to fix a profile, you can jump on the op-up. Op-ups for cutting something for sitting down at tea time, for putting your tools on, instead of keep bending down. Am I doing a good one on op-ups, Mick? That's enough, I think. It's enough on op-ups, but they are. I'm only saying it because really, boys, if you're a young kiddie, just get yourself a couple of op-ups. Uh, that's enough on that. OK, so we're going to show you the outtakes of what we did, so it will make you laugh. It, it's funny, but, you know, we've had to cancel it because it was the worst bit of filming we've ever done. But we show the outtakes if you want to watch it. And there are some good things on there, and there's some funny bits, especially at the end. There's a very funny bit. Also on it, I'm going to talk about a chap called Dylan, a friend of ours. And I can tell you now, lads, you're watching this the same as he's watching it. So when he watches this, he doesn't know, honestly, what's going to happen and what I'm going to say. So, Dylan, you'll be on in a minute, um, and I talk about Dylan. Uh, anyway, what it is, Dylan sells the slabs. So if you're in East Sussex, he is worth giving a call because he will sell you... Where's the camera gone? I'm just looking at your shoes. My feet? 
he, did you show the fossil? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little fossil. Okay, Mick, 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 Mick. Um, I forgot what I was saying. No, Dylan, yeah. So he doesn't know this bit of field was on, but he will sell you slabs if you live in the area. He will do a small load. You won't have to have a whole... I'll get back in case you're too close. You won't have to have a whole crate. If you do have a couple of crates, he will always take it back. You know, you can't do that at the builder's merchants. They want you to have the whole crate. He will let you choose the stone. If you go to his yard, you can look at all the stone like this. He's got it all out. None of his at the yard is as good as ours. I mean, he gets someone... Mick, look at this. Yeah. Watch. I just want to say something to Dylan. Why don't you get me and Mick to lay your stabs outside the yard? You're always getting blokes to do it cheap, aren't you? You said that, Mick. Yeah. And this is how they should look. Dylan's are nice, you'll see, but this is how we have to lay them. Um, is there anything else, Mick? Can you think of anything else? Because we've got to show... And I've got to get to this gig. I've got them all playing tonight. Can you, can you think of anything? Can you press that suit? Oh, the suit, yeah. Well, no, I will. Cass told me. I'll press it after this one. So, lads, yeah, so... OK, sorry to keep on. I talk too much. I do know that. But this day, And thanks for all your comments. We like the comments, don't we, Mick? Yeah, we love them. Mick appreciates it when you could get... <laughs> He's getting more comments than me now. And um, but, yeah, we appreciate your comments. It is a laugh. And, you know, we're all together. We're all builders and we're all bricklayers, you know? And this video might not be good, but it's as good as most of the television you watch, which is absolute rubbish, and it hasn't cost no money. OK, so this is the outtakes. And enjoy it, and we won't, we'll make a better one very shortly. OK, Mick, can I go now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, see you later, lads. Thanks yeah. again. That's it, that worked well. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Are you getting a very good film there? Yeah. Um, I don't know if they got that one, really, but... Uh, OK, come down. Mick, you've got to watch this joints. Yeah. You'll have to come over here, because you, you're going to be awkward there. I want to go over there. Well, uh, you can lay a slab? Or what? Well, not yet. No, I've got to show them what we're doing. Mick? Yeah. Here. Um, so, they were a little bit worried about the damp course. You know, you're meant to be six inches below damp, all that business. Well, this is so thin that we suggested, instead of taking it all up and repointing it, we'd relay the patio. So we bedded one up here. Right, and it's below the dam. As long as it runs away from the house, it's not a problem. So if it runs away, we hit that line down there, and it's running down that way. When we've got that, we know... Nick, Nick. Yeah. When we lay a course down there, we can then pull a line from here... It disappeared. Eh? No. We can then pull a line from there. Mick, this is getting complicated for you, I know. I know. Yeah, well, we'll have to retake it. But I just want to show this block. Yeah, I've got the block. Well, because because we've got, this isn't going very well. Because we've got that line coming through there, we can then put a block on this line, hitting that line, over to there. I'm not sure that that's very clear, Mick, because you. Um, I think you need to stand in one place with the camera because it's getting complicated. Anyway, listen, I'm not sure so far about that. Where are you going? Well, it's not working out very well. It's too complicated. It's, um... That's not explained it very well, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't like that. Oh, just quickly, lads, here's another wall we did recently, just down the road from that last one in stone and i think you'll see that's a lovely wall looks fantastic and um we didn't have time to finish it we were so busy so tom and ben who we talked about earlier in their videos because we taught them bricklaying they were able to come and do well a better job than us i think it looks fantastic so well done tom and ben you didn't let us down lads okay there you go that's it lads see you soon mick come back over here Okay, so now what I'm going to say is, quickly, um, this stone, this Indian stone, harvest, and uh, someone we know who does, he's got a yard, Dylan, he said uh, he'd like us just to give him a plug, if you're in East Sussex, you know, and he's, he said he enjoyed our sense of humour when he watched the films. And, um, yeah, so, he, 
He said he enjoyed our sense of humour. He's called Dylan, this is a good one. He's called Dylan, and I never know why. His best mate said his name's Tim. And I said, um, who calls him Tim? He said, only his very good friends. He said, nobody calls him Tim. So I said, what do you call him? You're his best mate. He said, I'll call him Dylan. <laughs> so that's Dylan anyway. So he sells this stone, but if you go over there, I'll tell you where you get it from. He's either on his computer. We don't know what he's watching, Mick, do we? You think he's online gambling, don't you? Gambling. Yeah, online gambling. He's either got a pretty... If a pretty girl comes in, he's up out of the seat like a flash. You know, arms round her. Either that or he's in New Zealand. And if he's not in New Zealand, Mick said it's like a snail coming out of his shell when he comes out of his office. He comes out of the office and he's round there selling them the most expensive stone. And um, anyway, I shouldn't say all that, but it was Gary. He's got two boys, Gary and Chris, and Gary set me up to say that about Dad. And yet Gary's lazier than his dad. He delivers the slabs, and if you try to get him out of the cabin, you need a monkey wrench to get him out. He's got sciatica every time he turns up. And, but in, being serious, no, I've got to be serious now, sorry, I have to be serious. Dylan, I'll, I'll tell you where you get it, but this stone, what is good about getting it from Dylan is, you don't have to buy a full crate. You can buy a small crate, if you buy two or three crates, if you have any over, he will take it back. And if you go to his yard, Mick, Mick, yeah. if you go to his yard, he will have all these slabs set out on his floor so you can see what you like. So if you are local and you're doing it yourself, it's worth calling him and seeing what price he can give you compared to others. And like I say, you can take it back and all that. Now, what top tips have we got, Mick, Mick, Mick? Top tips, because we ain't done very well with that first Pointing. bit. Top tips. Pointing. No, it's ten round here. The old pups, which right. I'm always on about. Now look, this is a really old... Once you get these old pups, you won't ever do without them. Bumping out the slabs, normally you, you put a slab, don't you, and you lean another one against it, all that business, or you put them on the deck. With these old pups, look, you can bump out your two foots, your foots, make the three foots are there. If you do the three foots, cameraman, yeah. Mick, Mick, Mick. Hang on, wait a minute. If you do the three foots, put a few on here. Hang on. And then you can lay them against it. And another thing I would say, Mick. Let me see the slabs. OK. Um, another thing I would say is don't put the slabs too close to you. Don't work on top of the slabs, because you'll end up moving them anyway. And you know when you're bending down like this all the time, you need to straighten your back sometimes. So it's not a bad thing to straighten your back, walk over to the slabs, pull yourself upright, and then go back. You don't want to have the slabs stuck here. It's not much fun. Another tip I would say, Mick, try and have a bucket of water near you, like this. It's always handy, that you do this in Holland a lot, to keep your trowel in in the summer, keep it at dinner time when you go for dinner. If you're working out of bins, you've always got water to knock it up with, and you've got a brush handy, so when you splash these slabs, keep a brush handy with you know a bit of water. So that definitely helps. I'm thinking if there's anything else here, Mick. These profiles, these often come in handy if you're laying slabs, for laying them down along the side. If you've got a line over that side, you can lay these, because it's more or less a slab and a joint. And then you can bed it up where you want it and use it as a little profile for slabs. I mean, it does work, especially if you're bedding up a touch. It's only a suggestion. Put a block on them. Yeah, like Mick says, because you've got these blocks, you put it down and you can weight a block on it and stop it pulling when you pull the line. Concrete blocks come in really handy. If you've got three or four always with you, they're so handy for pulling your lines. But like, this is perfect. Look, Mick. I'll show this one again. Yeah. I've got that line there. I know that line's right. So I can put this line to this, pull it to that, and then when you're doing it, can you see my tape, Mick? You sort of measure this one, like I've measured this line from there, and I'd find it's one, two, four and a half. So then come down the other end, Mick. And you measure the same. One, two, four and a half. Then, put the block on there, 
pull it through, I know that these slabs in the middle, I measure them one, two, four and a half. So I know that I'm going to, because when you're doing it like we bond it here, obviously if you do it in straight lines and just bond the straight lines, that's quite easy. But when you're bonding like that, it's not as easy to get the line right. You have a job getting some of them in. So if you do that, you're more or less safe. Um, anything else, Mick? Pointing. Pointing. Well, Mick does the pointing. Show him the pointing. Mick won't use that stuff you brush in, will you? No. He likes to do the old-fashioned way of pointing, and he makes a nice job of it. And uh, he does it because it's a lot easier than laying slabs, so I have to lay the slabs, <laughs> which is a pain, really, because it's hard work with these. So there's been a lot of complaints that I don't have Mick on the video, so we're actually going to get him on camera this time. And here we go, look. Sadly, it's only his hands. And we've had to put gloves on to conceal his identity. We can't have him with his skin showing. Hang on, so... Now, let's see what he's doing. OK, look, now, can you see all you young bricklayers? I know you all do this different ways, but Mick points like this. He likes a big joint so he can throw the pug right in rather than brush it in. And then he does the pointing so. Uh, see, I can't do this as neat as Mick. Look, it's a better job because you fill the joint right up. If you brush stuff in dry, it'll come out eventually, weeds will grow through it. But when Mick does it like this, and um, he's old fashioned, he likes to throw a strong mix in and then. It'll point it like this, and what I'll do, I'll show you a little bit of the other work when it's finished. I haven't got the patience for this. And funnily enough, when we were younger, Mick used to go with my wife, Cathy, and I actually used to go with his wife, Marion. We still do. I mean, that's why we've been both been married 49 years. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. No, I've got to be serious. OK, look, so there's Mick now. You've even got his knees now. I'm overdoing it, Mick. I've got your knees in. Cut. He, cut, cut. He's got his knees in. No, I'm going to show you a bit of the pointing that Mick's done. So this is the pointing, look, when it's finished. And hang on a minute. Let me just show you. So when Mick's done the pointing, look, it, this is the finished sort of article. And it just looks nice. Don't worry if the joints are big. You know, the more pug you can get in, the better. If the joints are tight, you can't get much in there. I know, I know a lot of you are going to say, no, we don't do it like that, it takes too long. OK, it might take a while, but at the end of the day, it's there forever, and they can pressure washer it. You know, sometimes the, um, you pressure washer it and all the joints come out, it, they won't come out. I think you saw Mick's shadow then. That's as near as you're going to get. You've just seen his shadow. Me and my shadow. OK, end of filming. That's the pointing instruction done. Mick, Mick. Had a bit do you want me to...? Yeah, lay one. Do you sure. want me to lay a slab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, let me go out of the way. Hey, what's what? my line? Yeah, all right, hang on. If you're going to get me doing this... Hang on. OK, so... I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I can't believe this. Come How on. have you got me laying slabs? There's a show. I show. not So if you lay a slab... I would, I use a shovel because we've got a bit of pug under here, but it's not too bad. But I'd probably, uh, we all do it different, so some of you are going to moan, I know. But make sure you keep this joint full up, so that when you rake it out, it's all in that you ain't got a lot of pointing to do. So keep it to the edge of that one, like that. And then, I'm assuming I'm going to put a three foot one in here. Make sure you've got plenty on, the, on these ends, like that. Right. That's important. And the then middle. obviously we need a little bit in the middle. So what I would do would probably
the thing is, you can't do it full up, right up, because you won't be able to bang it down. I don't know how I got this one. I don't know how you got me doing this on camera, Mick. Yeah. Uh, so, you take a slab, like Mind. that. Mind your back. Well, you're going to help me then? I'll tell me. Why not? So, in there. Just drop it in, leave it for a second, let it settle, otherwise you'll end up banging it below the line. Another thing you need when you do these slabs is a six foot level. So I've got a six foot level. I, I have to apologise because make me, the first part of this video is a bit of a, it's embarrassing. Wasn't very good, Mick. Camera work, might, but you might have got the gist of it. Gist. Anyway, Mick, <coughs> so then I've got the line there so I, I can see what I'm aiming for. Just be careful you don't knock it too low. But now look, okay, now I'm, I'm looking, I've got a slight fall that way, which is perfect, which is what I want. And You see that line there? So I'm on that line. I've just got to check I've got a fall here. So it's coming down there. That's telling me that's perfect. Cross here. Obviously you get dips in the slabs, so they're not always going to be spot on. But check that way. And you check that way. And it looks fairly good, Mick, doesn't it? Spot on. And it's just got a slight fall. You don't want too much. A couple of inches in this distance. Three inches, you wouldn't notice it. Um, <coughs> is there anything else, Mick? That's not been our most successful video, but you might have got the gist of it. Um, it's only that bloke said, when's the next one? And we've, we thought we'd better make one. The next one would be more organised than this. Keep the joints. Eh? Joints. What? Keep them big? Yeah. Yeah. Mick says keep the joints big so that you can get plenty of pug in there. And also with these slabs, if you keep them tight, often you can't get the little ones in. So don't be afraid of having an inch joint. It's, you know, you can have little joints if you're brushing that stuff in. Um, it's quite expensive. You've got to keep the joint full up if you do that. But like Mick says, even if it's inch and a half, when you're laying it like this, it doesn't notice. A big joint's not a problem. And show me your point to Mick, how it looks. You know, you're not gonna. What? In this patio, Mick, I'm here. Yep. Anyway. This patio is. I mean, seriously, it's one. It's so flat now. It, it had a great big bump. I, I gunned it all out down that end. Got the line. For, it, it works nice now. Even if I say so myself. I mean, I've worked up. Mick's punched around, but <laughs> Mick, I've just got to go. Yeah, you know right. what I forgot? You had told me. You had reminded me. What I've got? Beer. Beer. So I'm just going to get a beer. So I see. Yeah. I've got one in the car. Okay. I'll just show them the patio, shall I? Yeah, show them the patio. He's gone to the car to get the beer. You wouldn't believe it, but when he was learning to drive, he had L plates all over the car. He got stopped by the police, on the roof, on the side, on the back. Then he bought it, then he decided to buy a car. Well, he bought this old banger. I think he paid a tenner for it, I'm not sure. But you will see in a minute. This car is rather special. It has special wheels with low profile tires, special paintwork, even on the door mirrors, special seat trim, adjustable steering column, tachometer, even a rear spoiler. And the price. That can't be right. He's probably forgot what he went out for. He's probably talking to one of his art parties on the phone. Get back, Mick. Mick, Mick, I'm back. So. <coughs> okay, so. What I said, sorry, I was. Dylan. 
I can tell you 100% Dylan and Gary didn't know about what we just done. So, and it was all a bit of a, you know, they're not as bad as all that. Well, they are, that. They are, aren't they? They are, like I said. I don't know what they are. Yeah, they are as bad as that. Right, I've got a beer. It's Italian. Italian beer this time. Be uh, they can't spell beer. You know the other ones got it wrong, didn't they? The Belgians. They couldn't spell cider. Beer. B I R R A. No wonder we're coming out of Europe. Now, and also I've had complaints about Mick. Mick, you wanted a drink, didn't you? Yeah. They said I should give you a glass. So, Mick. Yeah. You got me a I'll glass. Give you a glass. <laughs> now, don't say I'm not generous. I've got your little glass of beer there for later. Um, I might give you another one after that. Anyway, I've got just so. Hmm. Mm. Oh, that is a nice beer, that one, really. Um, Glad you very like. quickly, it's been a bit, not so good this one, but, so I'll end up with a bit of a laugh. This will make you laugh. Uh, you've got to have a good sense of humour. If you, there's no more tips, so if you're not interested in having a laugh, get off, you know, need not watch anymore. A few years ago, my mate had a birthday party, 65. He had all his old friends there. And you know what they do at the Oscars, they send you a video because you can't make it. So I sent him a video on a VHS. Uh, said I couldn't make it and I told his wife not to look at it. This is a true story. And I said, put it on when everyone sat down at the end of the evening. And I said, don't watch it before, but it'll be, you know, Bob will love it. And so there were some quite nice bits at the beginning. And then he's got a room full of old people and friends. And then this comes on, what you're going to see now. And it's a true story. OK, Mick. Keep the camera rolling, and yeah, we'll see you soon, lads. And sorry, it's not as good this one, but we'll make the next one better. Cheers. Um, hey, I'll tell you what, I'd love to see Dylan's face. Can you? I'd love to see Dylan's <laughs> he'd be, face. He'd be Can pissed you, off with hey, you. I'll why? Tell you. Will he? Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. Turn it off. Is it off? No. That's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and on a more serious note, uh, yeah, I want to say thanks, Bob, because. I know we've had all these people talking about you, but really you are the most generous bloke I've ever met. And thanks for all the work you've given me and my mates over the years. And uh, you've really helped us all out. Not only me, but Mark's mates as well, I'd imagine, Nicholas. Oh, everyone that comes into touch with you, Bob. You're a diamond. You're 65 now. This don't interest you no more. And um, I just hope that Mark and his mates are watching me, because I'm the main part at the moment. And I'm sure you are, Mark. Um, and Bob, I'm gonna end with the video. A uh, couple of bits of your family, the main people, Bev, Nicola and Mark. And uh, have a good night, mate. And I hope the tape comes out. I've just spent all day doing it. So, I'll see you soon. I'm gonna watch the telly. Tell us when I'm in shot. You're in shot. I'm in shot now. Yeah. Okay, lads, this is really quick, uh, something for you. Um, yeah, OK. Just quickly, in July, July the 14th, Sunday, in Hastings, we have what we call Pirates Day. I'll just show you a quick little video of it so you can see what it's like. But if you've got a family and kids and you want to book in Saturday night in Hastings, this is really worth coming to. Why I'm saying it is on the Saturday, we've got a little gig, well, quite a big gig going on. There's a private party afterwards where I am obviously going, obviously, um, but if you come and you say you're with Glenn and you'll see me in my white suit, you will get into this private party where all the musicians will be playing and everything. So if you've got a family, they can do parts day, you can come out for a drink. If you wear a little badge or something and there's any other brickers, you'll know who they are, you can have a drink, get to know them all um, and have a good weekend, maybe meet some friends. Um, it's really up to you. I'm not worried, you know, obviously, but I'm just telling you, it is a good weekend in Hastings and you'll meet a lot of people and we'll have a laugh. And, uh, and meet you. Well, they meet me. Mick, Mick might not be there, but he's going to send us a tape. You can send a tape, can you? If you can't, want can't I come then? Well, if you want to come, but you'll have to come incognito. They can't see you. You'll have to wear a mask. Um, so that's it. If you fancy it, um, put a comment and say, yeah. And if there's enough of you, I'll give you more details. What do you mean I've got to wear a mask? Well, I don't want them recognising seeing your face. Why not? Well, they couldn't do it. He looks like Paul Newman. No. He's actually, um, Come no, on. I'm not going to say it. Uh, 
Mick, that's it. OK, yeah, so if you do, just comment and I'll, we'll sort something out, OK? And we'll have a laugh. Got a good day in the summer, you know, better than going abroad, all that Brexit stuff, you know. OK, thanks again, boys. See you soon. Yeah. Is that it, Mick? Yeah. Yeah, they might come, might not they? They might. And I'd like to say thank you for your patience and thank you for waiting in a very crowded area. You've done brilliantly today, thank you. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to announce the record. Now, the previous record was 1,878, so quite a lot to beat. <laughs> and I can now give you the figure. Six thousand. Two years ago, you set the record at 6,166. It was then broken in Penzance with 8,734. I can now confirm that gathered here today are a total of 14,200.